Leonardo da Vinci said, Beyond a doubt, truth bears the same relation to falsehood as light to darkness. And this truth is in itself so excellent that, even when it dwells on humble and lowly matters, it is still infinitely above uncertainty and lies, disguised in high and lofty discourses, because in our minds, even if lying should be their fifth element, this does not prevent that the truth of things is the chief nutriment of superior intellects, though not of wandering wits. But you who live in dreams are better pleased by the sophistical reasons and frauds of wits in great and uncertain things than by those reasons which are certain and natural and not so above us. This is the Constitution of Italy. The Fundamental Principles Article 1 Italy is a democratic republic founded on labor. Sovereignty belongs to the people and is exercised by the people in the forms and within the limits of the Constitution. Article 2 The republic recognizes and guarantees the inviolable rights of the person, both as an individual and in the social groups where human personality is expressed. The Republic expects that the fundamental duties of political, economic, and social solidarity be fulfilled. Article 3. All citizens have equal social dignity and are equal before the law, without distinction of sex, race, language, religion, political opinion, personal, and social conditions. It is the duty of the Republic to remove those obstacles of an economic or social nature which constrain the freedom of equality and citizens, thereby impeding the full development of the human person and the effective participation of all workers in the political, economic, and social organization of the country. Article 4. The Republic recognizes the rights of all citizens to work and promote those conditions which render this right effective. Every citizen has a duty, according to personal potential and individual choice, to perform an activity or a function that contributes to the material or spiritual progress of society. Article 5. The Republic is one and indivisible. It recognizes and promotes local autonomies and implements the fullest measure of administrative decentralization in those services which depend on the state. The Republic adapts the principles and methods of its legislation to the requirements of autonomy and decentralization. Article 6. The Republic safeguards linguistic minorities by means of appropriate measures. Article 7. The state and the Catholic Church are independent and sovereign, each within its own sphere. Their relations are regulated by the later the Latern Pacts. Amendments to such pacts, which are accepted by both parties, shall not require the procedure of constitutional amendments. Article 8. All religious denominations are equally free below beneath the law. Denominations other than Catholicism have the right to self-organization according to their own statutes provided that these do not conflict with Italian law. Their relations with the state are regulated by law based on agreements with their respective representatives. Article 9. The Republic promotes the development of culture and of scientific and technical research. It safeguards natural landscape and the historical and artistic heritage of the nation. Article 10. The Italian legal system conforms to the generally recognized principles of the international law. The legal status of foreigners is regulated by law in conformity with international provisions and treaties. A foreigner who, in his home country, is denied the actual exercise of the democratic freedoms guaranteed by the Italian Constitution shall be entitled to the right of asylum under the conditions established by law. A foreigner may not be extradited for a political offense. Article 11. 
Italy rejects war as an instrument of aggression against the freedom of other peoples and as a means for the settlement of international disputes. Italy agrees on conditions of equality with other states to the limitations of sovereignty that may be necessary to a world order ensuring peace and justice among the nations. Italy promotes and encourages international organizations furthering such ends. Article 12. The flag of the Republic is the Italian tricolor, green, white, and red, in three vertical bands of equal size. My friends, if you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain a little. Number one, it's free. Two, there's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Anchor will then distribute your podcast for you, so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many, many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you've ever been looking for to make a podcast in one place. Go ahead and download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Part 1. Rights and Duties of Citizens Title 1. Civil Relations Article 13. Personal liberty is inviolable. No one may be detained, inspected, or searched, nor otherwise subjected to any restriction of personal liberty except by other or by the order of the judiciary stating a reason and only in such cases and in such manner as provided by law. In exceptional circumstances and under such conditions of necessity and urgency as shall conclusively be defined by the law, the police may take provisional measures that shall be referred within 48 hours to the judiciary for validation and which in default of such validation in the following 48 hours shall be revoked and considered null and void. Any act of physical and moral violence against a person subjected to restriction of personal liberty shall be punished. The law shall establish a maximum duration of preventative detention. Article 14. The home is inviolable. Personal domicile shall be inviolable. Home inspections, searches, or seizures shall not be admissible save in the cases of manners complying with measures to safeguard personal liberty. Controls and inspections for reasons of public health and safety or for economic and fiscal purposes shall be regulated by the appropriate laws. Article 15. Freedom and conf confidentiality of correspondence and of every other form of communication is inviolable. Limitations may only be imposed by judicial decision stating the reasons and in accordance with the guarantees provided by the law. Article 16. Every citizen has the right to reside and travel freely in any part of the country except for such general limitations as may be established by law for reasons of health or security. No restrictions may be imposed for political reasons. Every citizen is free to leave the territory of the Republic and return to it, notwithstanding any legal obligations. Article 17. Citizens have the right to assemble peacefully and unarmed. No previous notice is required for meetings, including those held in places open to the public. In case of meetings held in public places, previous notice shall be given to the authorities, who may prohibit them only for, pro for proven reason of security or public safety. Article 18. Citizens have the right to form associations freely and without authorization for those ends that are not forbidden by criminal law. Secret organizations and associations that, even indirectly, pursue political aims by means of organizations having a military character shall be forbidden. Article 19. Anyone is entitled to freely profess their religious belief in any form, individually or with others, and to promote them and celebrate rights in public or in private, provided they are not offensive to public morality. Article 20. No special limitation 
or tax burden may be imposed on the establishment, legal capacity, or activity of any organization on the ground of its religious nature or religious or confessional aims. Article 21. Anyone has the right to freely express their thoughts in speech, writing, or any other form of communication. The press may not be subjected to any authorization or censorship. Seizures may be permitted only by judicial order stating the reason and only for offenses expressly determined by the law on the press or in case of violation of the obligation to identify the persons responsible for such offenses. In such cases, when there is absolute urgency and timely intervention of the judiciary is not possible, a periodical may be confiscated by the criminal police which shall immediately and in no case later than 24 hours refer the matter to the judiciary for validation. In default of such validation in the following 24 hours, the measure shall be revoked and considered null and void. The law may introduce general provisions for the disclosure of financial sources of periodical publications. Publications, performances, and other exhibits offensive to public morality shall be prohibited. Measures of preventative and repressive measure against such violations shall be established by law. Article 22. No one may be deprived of his legal capacity, citizenship, or name for a political reason. Article 23. No obligation of a personal or financial nature may be imposed on any person except by law. Article 24. Anyone may bring cases before a court of law in order to protect their rights under the civil and administrative law. Defense is an inadviable and inviolable right at every stage and instance of legal proceedings. The poor are entitled by law to proper means for action or defense in all courts. The law shall define the conditions and forms of reparations in cases of judicial errors. Article 25. No case may be removed from the court seized with it as established by law. No punishment may be inflicted except by virtue of a law in force at the time the offense was committed. No restriction may be placed on a person's liberty save for as provided by law. Article 26. Extradition of a citizen may be granted only if it is expressly envisaged envisaged by international conventions. In any case, extradition may not be permitted for political offenses. Article 27. Criminal responsibility is personal. A defendant shall be considered not guilty until a final sentence has been passed. Punishments may not be inhumane and shall aim at re-educating the convicted. The death penalty is prohibited. Article 28. Officials of the state or public agencies shall be directly responsible under criminal, civil, and administrative law for acts committed in violation of rights. In such cases, civil liability shall extend to the state and to such public agency. Title II Ethical and Social Rights and Duties Article 29. The Republic recognizes the rights of the family as a natural society founded on marriage. Marriage is based on the moral and legal equality of the spouses within the limits laid down by law to guarantee the unity of the family. Article 30. It is a duty and right of a parent to support, raise, and educate their children even if born out of wedlock. In the case of incapacity of the parents, the law provides for the fulfillment of their duties. The law ensures such legal and social protection measures as are compatible with the rights of the members of the legitimate family to any children born out of wedlock. The law shall establish rules and constraints for the determination of paternity. Article 31. The Republic assists 
the formation of the family and the fulfillment of its duties, with particular consideration for large families, through economic measures and other benefits. The Republic protects mothers, children, and the young by adopting necessary provisions. Article 32. The Republic safeguards health as a fundamental right of the individual, as a collective interest, and guarantees free medical care for the indigent. No one may be obligated to undergo any health treatment except under the provisions of the law. The law may not, under any circumstances, violate the limits imposed by the respect for the human person. Article 33. The Republic guarantees the freedom of the arts and sciences, which may be freely taught. The Republic lays down general rules for education and establishes state schools of all branches and grades. Entities and private persons have the right to establish schools and institutions of education at no cost to the state. The law, when setting out the right and obligations for the non-state schools, which request parity, shall ensure that these schools enjoy full liberty and offer their pupils an education and qualifications of the same standards as those afforded to pupils in state schools. State examinations are prescribed for admission to and graduation from the various branches and grades of schools and for qualification to exercise a profession. Higher education institutions, universities, and academies have the right to establish their own regulations within the limits laid down by the law. Article 34. Schools are open to everyone. Primary education given for at least eight years is compulsory and free of tuition. Capable and deserving pupils, including those lacking financial resources, have the right to attain the highest levels of education. The Republic renders this right effective through scholarship, allowances to families, and other benefits, which shall be assigned through competitive examinations. Skydiving is risky, but not having life insurance to take care of your loved ones is riskier. It means they would suffer financially if something happened to you. And that's a risk you don't have to take. Life insurance is more affordable than most people think. Click on the link below and schedule an appointment with me. I can help. Title 3. Economic Rights and Duties. Article 35. The Republic protects work in all its forms and practices. It provides for the training and professional advancement of workers. It promotes and encourages international agreements and organizations which have the aim of establishing and regulating labor rights. It recognizes the freedom to emigrate, subject to the obligations set out by law in general interest and protects Italian workers abroad. Article 36. Workers have the right to a remuneration commensurate to the quantity and quality of their work and in any case such as to ensure them and their families a free and dignified existence. Maximum daily working hours are established by law. Workers have the right to a weekly rest day and paid annual holidays. They cannot waive this right. Article 37. Working women are entitled to equal rights and, for comparable jobs, equal pay as men. Working conditions must allow women to fulfill their essential role in the family and ensure appropriate protection for the mother and child. The law establishes the minimum wage for paid labor. The Republic protects the work of minors by means of special provisions and guarantees them the right to equal pay for equal work. Article 38. Every citizen unable to work and without the necessary means of subsistence is entitled to welfare support. Workers have the right to be assured adequate means for their needs and necessities in the case of accidents, illness, disability, old age, and involuntary unemployment. 
Disabled and handicapped persons are entitled to receive education and vocational training. Responsibilities under this article are entrusted to entities and institutions established by or supported by the state. Private sector assistance may be freely provided. Article 39. Trade unions may be freely established. No obligations may be imposed on trade unions other than registration at local or central offices according to the provisions of the law. A condition for registration is that the statutes of the trade unions establish their internal organization on a democratic basis. Registered trade unions are legal persons. They may, through a unified representation that is proportional to their membership, enter into collective labor agreements that have a mandatory effect for all persons belonging to the categories referred to in the agreement. Article 40. The right to strike shall be exercised in compliance with the law. Article 41. Private economic enterprise is free. It may not be carried out against the common good or in such a manner that could damage safety, liberty, and human dignity. The law shall provide for appropriate programs and controls so that the public and private sector economic activity may be oriented and coordinated for social purposes. Article 42. Property is public or private. Economic assets may belong to the state to public bodies or to private persons. Private property is recognized and guaranteed by law, which prescribes the ways it is acquired, enjoyed, and its limitations so as to ensure its social function and make it accessible to all. In the cases provided for by the law and with provisions for compensation, private property may be expropriated for reasons of general interest. The law establishes the regulations and limits of legitimate and testamentary inheritance and the rights of the state in matters of inheritance. Article 43. The, for the purposes of the common good, the law may establish that an enterprise or a category thereof be, through a preemptive decision or compulsory purchase authority with provision of compensation, reserved to the government, a public agency, a workers' or users' association provided that such enterprise operates in the field of essential public services, energy sources, or monopolies, and are of general public interest. Article 44. For the purpose of ensuring the rational use of land and equitable social relationships, the law imposes obligations and constraints on private ownership of land. It sets limitations to the size of property according to the region and the agricultural area, encourages and imposes land reclamation to the conversation, to the conversion of latifundia and the reorganization of farm units, and assists small and medium-sized properties. The law makes provisions for mountain areas. Article 45. The Republic recognizes the social function of cooperation of a mutually supportive, non-speculative nature. The law promotes and encourages cooperation through appropriate means and ensures its character and purposes through appropriate checks. The law safeguards and promotes the handicrafts. Article 46. For the economic and social betterment of workers and in harmony with the needs of production, the Republic recognizes the rights of workers to collaborate in the management of enterprises in the ways and within the limits established by law. Article 47. The Republic encourages and safeguards savings in all forms. It regulates, coordinates, and oversees the operation of credit. The Republic promotes house and farm ownership and direct and indirect shareholding in the main national enterprises through the use of private savings. Title 4. Political Rights and Duties. Article 48. Any citizen, male or female, who has attained majority is entitled to vote. The vote is personal and equal.
debris and secret, the exercise thereof is a civic duty. The law lays down the requirements and modalities for citizens residing abroad to exercise their right to vote and guarantees that this right is effective. A constituency a constituency of Italians abroad shall be established for elections to the House of Parliament. The number of seats of such constituency is set forth in a constitutional provision according to criteria established by law. The right to vote cannot be restricted except for civil incapacity or as a consequence of an irrevocable penal system or in cases of moral unworthiness as laid down by law. Article 49. Any citizen has the right to freely establish parties to contribute to determining national policies through a democratic process. Article 50. Any citizen may present petitions to Parliament to request legislative measures or to express collective needs. Article 51. Any citizen of either sex is eligible for public offices and elected positions on equal terms according to the conditions established by law. To this end, the Republic shall adopt specific measures to promote equal opportunities between women and men. The law may grant Italians who are not resident in the Republic the same rights as citizens for the purposes of access to public offices and elected positions. Whoever is elected to a public function is entitled to the time needed to perform that function and to retain a previously held job. Article 52 the defense of the country is a sacred duty for every citizen. Military service is obligatory within the limits in the manner set below. Its fulfillment shall not prejudice a citizen's job nor the exercise of political rights. The organization of the armed forces shall be based on the democratic spirit of the republic. Article 53. Every person shall contribute to public expenditure in accordance with their capability. The tax system shall be progressive. Article 54. All citizens have the duty to be loyal to the Republic and to uphold its constitution and laws. Those citizens whom public functions are entrusted have the duty to fulfill such functions with discipline and honor, taking an oath in those cases established by law. Protect the ones you love. You're a chauffeur, a short order cook, a homework maven, a dryer of tears, also known as mommy. It's rewarding and tough, especially if you are your children's one and only. But have you considered what would happen if you were no longer there to take care of them? While nothing can replace you, having life insurance means that if something happened to you, your children would be okay financially. Protect the ones you love with life insurance. Click on the link below and schedule an appointment with me. I can help. Part 2. Organization of the Republic. Title 1. The Parliament. Section 1. The Houses. Article 55. Parliament consists of the Chamber of Deputies and the Senate of the Republic. Parliament shall meet in joint sessions only in cases established by this Constitution. Article 56. The Chamber of Deputies is elected by direct and universal suffrage. The number of deputies is 630, 12 of which are elected in the overseas constituency. All voters who have attained the age of 25 on the day of elections are eligible to be deputies. The division of seats among the electoral districts, with the exception of the number of seats assigned to the overseas constituency, is obtained by dividing the number of inhabitants of the Republic, as shown by the latest general census of the population, by 618, and by distributing the seats in proportion to the population in every electoral district, on the basis of whole shares and the highest remainders. Article 57. The Senate of the Republic is elected on a regional basis, with the exception of the seats assigned the overseas constituency. The number of senators to be elected is 315. 
six of whom are elected in the overseas constituency. No region may have fewer than seven senators. Molays shall have two. Valdeaost, one. The division of seats among the regions, with the exception of the number of seats assigned to the overseas constituency, and in accordance with the provisions of the Article 56 above, is made in proportion to the population of the regions as per the latest general census on the basis of whole shares and the highest remainders. Article 58. Senators are elected by universal and direct suffrage by voters who are 25 years of age. Voters who have attained the age of 40 are eligible to be elected to the Senate. Article 59. Former presidents of the Republic are senators by right and for life unless they have renounced the office. The president of the Republic may appoint five citizens who have honored the nation through their outstanding achievements in the social, scientific, artistic, and literary fields as life senators. Article number 60. The Chamber of Deputies and the Senate of the Republic are elected for five years. The term for each house may not be extended except by law and only in the case of war. Article 61. Elections for a new parliament shall take place within 70 days from the end of the term of the previous houses. The first meeting is convened no later than 20 days after the elections. Until such time as the new houses meet, the powers of the previous houses are extended. Article 62. In default of any other provisions, Parliament shall be convened on the first working day of February and October. Each house may be convened in special session on the initiative of its president, the president of the republic, or a third of its members. When one house is convened in special session, the other house is convened as a matter of course. Article 63. Each house shall elect a president and a bureau from among its members. When Parliament meets in joint sessions, the president and the bureau are those of the Chamber of Deputies. Article 64. Each house adopts its own rules by an absolute majority of its members. The sittings are public, however, each of the houses are Parliament in joint session may decide to convene a closed session. The decisions of each House and of Parliament are not valid if the majority of the members is not present, and if they are not passed by a majority of those present, save for those instances where the Constitution prescribes a special majority. Members of the government, even when not members of Parliament, have the right and, when requested, the obligation to attend the sittings. They shall be heard every time they so request. Article 65. The law determines the cases of disqualification with the office of deputy or senator. No one may be a member of both houses at the same time. Article 66. Each house verifies the credentials of its members and the causes of disqualification that may arise at a later stage. Article 67. Each member of Parliament represents the nation and carries out his duties without a binding mandate. Article 68. Members of Parliament cannot be held accountable for opinions expressed or votes cast in the performance of their function. In default of the authorization of his house, no member of Parliament may be submitted to personal or home search, nor may he be arrested or otherwise deprived of his personal freedom nor held in detention except when a final court sentence is enforced, or when the member is apprehended in the act of committing an offense for which arrest flagrans delecto is mandatory. Such an authorization shall be required in order to monitor a member of Parliament's conversation or communications, or to seize such member's mail. Article 69. Members of Parliament shall receive an allowance established by law.